Good morning, brothers and sisters. Uh, we are so blessed, we're so thankful to the Lord sa lahat ng dinala po ng Panginoon ngayon pong araw na to. We would like to especially welcome all the relatives of Sister Tere. Opo, uh, they've not seen each other for so long. Okay, so they're here and we pray na i-bless ni Lord ang inyo pong reunion. Opo, dahil tunay nga na we've heard a lot about you guys, all right, and how the Lord has used you to bring the family to the Lord. So, mga kapatid, kayo po ba ay nakatanggap ng mercy ng Panginoon? Amen, di po ba? Tayo ay patuloy na nakakatanggap ng mercy at ng pag-ibig ng Panginoon. All right? Kaya po tayo po ay tunay na nagagalak ngayon pong umaga na to. Nagpubunyay po tayo, nagre-rejoice po tayo dahil natanggap natin ang pag-ibig ng ating Panginoon. Ngayon po ay itutuloy po natin ang ating pong series sa libro po ng James. We're almost done with James. Today we will look at James chapter 5 verses 1 to 12 and we will all be we will all be able to relate to this topic because this topic is about patience okay patience in affliction so na mangyari po na tumayo po tayong lahat could we all stand rise from our seats and let's read all together James chapter 5 it says be patient then brothers and sisters until the lord's coming See how the farmer waits for the land to yield its valuable crop, patiently waiting for the autumn and spring rains. You too, be patient and stand firm, because the Lord's coming is near. Don't grumble against one another, brothers and sisters, or you will be judged. The judge is standing at the door. Brothers and sisters, as an example of patience in the face of suffering, take the prophets who spoke in the name of the Lord. As you know, we count as blessed those who have persevered. You have heard of Job's perseverance and have seen what the Lord finally brought about. The Lord is full of compassion and mercy. Above all, my brothers and sisters, do not swear, not by heaven or by earth or by anything else. All you need to say is a simple yes or no. Otherwise, you will be condemned. Let's all come before the presence of God. Our loving Heavenly Father God, we thank you, we praise you, we lift your most holy name on high today. Tunay, Panginoon, buhay kayo. You are the living God. You are the majestic one. Lord Jesus, your greatness, Lord God, nobody can fathom. Lord, you are great and you are greatly to be praised. And thank you, Lord Jesus, for bringing us here all together today. Kasama po, Panginoon, ang aming pong mga beloved guests today, and even our online viewers, some brethren, Lord, who by, Lord, uh, reason, some reason, Lord God, hindi po sila nakarating. Panginoon, kami po ay nagpapasalamat because your presence is in our midst. Your Holy Spirit, Lord, is at work. And Lord, we thank you because we know that you will fill our hearts today with your love. You will fill our hearts today, Lord Jesus, with hope, with presence, with your goodness and pre your presence in our hearts. Salamat po, Panginoon. It is not by might, it is not by our own power, but it is by the Spirit of the Lord. Panginoon, salamat po, Lord Jesus, Father God, that... Lord, we have victories in our lives, but it is not because of our own power, not through our own intelligence, but it is because of your right arm, your arm, Lord God, the light of your presence, because you love us. Salamat po, Panginoon. We entrust you the hearing of your word. May our hearts, Lord Jesus, worship you. May our hearts, Lord, continue to offer you all that is within us. We love you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Makakaupo na po tayo. Napakaganda po ng atin pong paksa, mga kapatid, ngayon pong umaga po na ito. Pagkat ang atin pong paksa ay tungkol po sa patience. Alright? Brethren, 
Are you going through a situation right now where your patience is truly being tested? Okay? Are you going through a situation right now where your patience is truly being tested? Alam niyo po, I'd like to give just ano po, a cute example of how the daily things in our lives can really test our patience. One time, may nareceive kaming text ni Brother M mula po sa isa nating mga members. Ninong, please pray for us. Our patience is being tested. Kasi po, yung bagong laptop na bigay nung kanilang office, yung kanilang toddler na two years old, dinangshot sa kape yung charger. Okay? <laughs> Wow! So, paano ka mag-work from home? Ang tindi. Alam niyo po yun. So, paano sila bibili ng panibagong charger nila? Okay? Paano ang next na gagawin nila? And dahil daily po yun. Okay? Daily yun. Kaya sabi nung aming inaanak na kapatidan po natin, sabi niya, please pray for us. Our patience is being tested. Brethren, maybe some of us Our patience is being tested in our health. Some of us, our patience is being tested in our work because maybe we are waiting for a, you know, for a breakthrough in our work. We're waiting probably for, there's a waiting time. We're looking for a job, for a job that really, really fits, alam nyo po yun, our, yung, yung atin pong uh, skills. All right, or maybe sa atin pung pero tayong sigurong situation kung saan tinetest yung patience natin with regards to other people. Okay, with regards to other people. You know, some of you already know this because we just shared naman namin ito sa ating discipleship groups. Brother M and I recently went through something really, really. Uh, a test of patience, especially for him. Kaya nga sabi ko, siguro yung muscle pain niya is brought about by, ano po, alam nyo yun eh. Kasi most of you, kilala nyo naman, alam, open book naman yung buhay namin sa inyo. Alam nyo po yun na nagkaroon nga kami ng ano, di ba, ng potential buyer dun sa uh, property na pinag, pinag, uh, pinag-partneran nung brother ni Brother M, tsaka siya. Ano po, and that Uh, supposedly buyer already occupied the house. Alam nyo po yun. Promising na kaya niyang i-secure yung bank loan niya. And wow! Alam nyo po, it took a year. Imagine the agony of having somebody living in an unpaid house. All right, Without rent or anything. And wow, talaga pong it was really a test of patience. It was a test of patience. Plus, Meron pang isa. Okay, hindi ko na i-detail kung ano yung isa. Pero grabe, grabe talaga na Lord, titingin lang kami sa iyo. Hindi kami gagawa ng anumang bagay na makaka-dishonor ng name mo. Alam niyo po 'yon. So it was really really hard. And then uh, in short, kay buti rin naman ng Panginoon. Kaya nga sinasabi ko sa inyo po kanina, na tang- na- na- naranasan niyo ba yung pag-ibig ng Diyos? Alright, na sometimes nakakagawa tayo ng maling desisyon na pangungunahan natin si Lord, pero nagro-Romans 8.28 pa rin yung buhay natin. He still causes all things to work together for our good. So, in other words, that uh, supposedly buyer left the property. Okay? But of course, not without some, ano po, not without some noise. Because at the end of it, gusto niya kaming ipatulfo. Okay? Talagang, ano po, erratic yung moods ng person, ano? Minsan mabait, minsan hindi, minsan mabait. So, finally, sabi niya, papatulfo daw niya kami. Eh, ang, alam niyo po yun, yung, kayo nga yung naagrabyado, di ba? Kasi nga nag-occupy sila ng, ano eh, ng, ng property for a year or so. And uh, what Brother M did, nagpag-usap kami, sabi namin, let's just talk to this guy and just tell him in a gentle manner, why is he treating us like this? Alright, so kinausap siya ni Brother M na, Boss, bakit ka ganyan? Di ba pinagbigyan ka na nga namin? We've been patient with you for one year. Why are you doing this to us? Alam nyo po, nakuha po sa ganong pakiusap. They left the place quietly. Okay, they left the place. And I think God is so good, He's so kind because He didn't allow Brother M to see 
them leave the house. <laughs> okay, hindi niya inalaw na makita, makita nila siya. Pagdating niya roon, wala na sila. Of course, meron pa mga things na nakaka-irritate, di ba? Nag-iwan sila ng maraming basura, yung mga ganun people. <laughs> Alam niyo po, yung matatest talaga yung patience mo. Pero, Lord, it's, uh, you have a reason for this. Alright? So, just want to share with you, ito yung our own share, alright? Na hindi po dahil pastor kami, ibig sabihin, wala kaming mga, ano, wala kaming tests. Alam nyo po, uh, hindi dahil nag encourage kami ng Word of God, ibig sabihin, wala kami pinapagdaanan din. So lahat po tayo, nobody is exempted, may pinagdadaanan po tayong lahat. So I don't know, brethren, what's testing your patience right now. Alright? Maybe it's not something like that. Maybe it's something like um, an unsaved loved one who tests your patience. Okay? Maybe it's a person, it's work. Now, do you know that not just in our personal lives, all right, but the sufferings we see all over the world, that really requires a lot of patience. And brethren, do you know that God is not going to right all the wrongs in this world until Jesus Christ returns? All right? God is not going to right all the wrongs in this world until Jesus Christ returns. We wished everything could be right by God now. But it won't. But He will. He will set things right and He will make all things perfect. He will restore the kingdom of God. And He will set things right one day. Siguradong sigurado po iyon. Ito pong mundo natin na ito ay meron po itong wakas. wakas. Meron po itong hangganan, hindi po ito forever. Mali yung mga sinasabi ng mga environmentalists na Paano na mangyayari, di ba? When you're godless, ang iniis, ang worldview mo, pag magtipid tayo, okay? Kasi mauubos yung ating ano, mauubos yung resources. Well, of course, you have to be good stewards of God's blessings, alright? Pero po, if you have a biblical worldview, you understand that history has its end. History is not forever because there's a program of God. Okay, there's a beginning and there is an end. So brethren, this is why the believers must patiently endure. We must hope for the coming of the Lord. We do not expect that in this world we will have everything easy and comfortable. Alright? Madidepress ka. Huwag mong isipin. Sometimes we shelter our kids too much. We do not give them a balanced view of life, we fail to explain to them that life is not all roses. That there are times, merong po talagang mga setbacks, may mga failures, and it has to be balanced. Otherwise, they will get depressed. Otherwise, hindi nila matitake, baka mag-suicide pa sila. Usong-uso yan sa mga, di po ba sa generation ngayon, that because they cannot, they, they don't have a balanced perspective of life, they are not able to have the emotional, all right, strength to understand things. In John 16, 33, Jesus himself said, In the world, in this world, you shall have tribulation. In Acts 14, 22, we must go through many hardships to enter the kingdom of God. So, sa ating mga buhay, isama natin sa equation na may tribulation. Amen po? Isama natin. So, don't, don't have this false expectation that you can have a fairy tale life or there is a life di po ba, na laging Pasko araw-araw. Hindi po eh. Hindi ganun. Ang, Jesus is realistic. The Bible is very realistic. In this world, you will have tribulation. Alright? Now, in our text, we will find na ang pagdating ng Panginoong Jesus, okay, the coming of the Lord was mentioned three times by James in our text. In verse 7, it says, Be patient then, brothers and sisters, until the Lord's coming. Verse 8, You too, be patient and stand firm because the Lord's coming is near. Bakit kaya pa ulit-ulit? Tapos maya-maya, sa verse 9, the judge is standing at the door. Okay? So, bakit ito pa ulit-ulit? Brethren, the return of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ is something that all Christians should expect. 
Why? Because we know that this world is temporary. Okay? This world will have tribulations and not everything will be right by God while in this world. But we know that He will one day when Jesus Christ returns and it could be any time. Alright? Sometimes I count the years. To, if today magra-rapture, count seven years of tribulation. In seven years, it's the millennium kingdom. It's the millennial. <laughs> Okay, so sometimes I think of it that way na ganun lang siya kadali kung time na, na, kung time na para ang Panginoon ay bumalik. In Titus chapter 2 verse 13, sabi ng Apostle, ni Apostle Paul, While we look forward with hope to that wonderful day when the glory of our great God and Savior Jesus Christ will be revealed. Brethren, we are looking forward to something. If you are being blessed today by God, you know what you are going to do so that you do not fall into worldliness? Always remember that this is not yet heaven. Hindi pa to langit. Pag masyado kang nahumaling sa mga bagay ng mundong ito, o sa mga pagpapala, siguro, lagi mong isipin, hindi pa to langit. There is a wonderful day when the glory of our great God and Savior will be revealed. So, Specifically, ano po kaya, mga kapatid, yun pong mga tribulations na ito pong mga Jewish Christians na ito ay kanilang pinagdadaanan. Makikita po natin, bakit sila sinasabihan na maging patient? Kasi po, doon sa verses 1 to 4, ito po yung context. Basahin natin. Now listen, you rich people. Weep and wail because of the misery that is coming on you. Your wealth has rotted and moths have eaten your clothes. Your gold and silver are corroded. Their corrosion will testify against you and eat your flesh like fire. You have hoarded wealth in the last days. Look, the wages you failed to pay the workers who mowed your fields are crying out against you. The cries of the harvesters have reached the ears of the Lord Almighty. You have lived on earth in luxury and self-indulgence. You have fattened yourselves in the day of slaughter. You have condemned and murdered the innocent one who was not opposing you. Here we will see that the injustice that these poor Jewish believers were going through was because of the hands of the rich. Okay? It was because of the hands of the rich. Sila po ay inapi. Sila po ay pinagmalupitan nung pong mga mayayaman nung panahon na yun. Kasi naalala nyo po, di po ba? Yung lands, ano po, kinamkam ng mga elite dun sa Judea, okay? And dahil po doon, nagkaroon po ng oppression, alright? Doon po sa mga mahihirap, lalo na doon sa mga day workers, alright? So these rich people, hindi sila believers, mga kapatid. No? Hindi sila mga mananampalataya. But they were oppressing the Christians who were part of the congregation of James, all right? So here we will find how exactly were the rich exploiting the poor. Paano ba nila pinagmamalupitan yung poor? Kaya nalalalin nyo dun sa isang message natin about don't show favoritism. Diba sabi dun ni, ni, ano, ni Apostle James? Don't show favoritism. Pag may, mat, ma, may, may mayamang dumating, iyon yung binibigyan mo bin, uh, binibigyan mo ng special attention eh yung mga mayayaman nga ang nag-exploit sa inyo sa James chapter 2 yun so pag idinikit mo dito sa James chapter 5 mas maintindihan mo ini-exploit sila ng mga mayayaman okay so sabi rito paano nila ini-exploit itong mga j poor Jews po na ito verse 4 sabi dito the wages you failed to pay the workers who mowed your fields are crying out against you. All right? Look, the wages you failed to pay the workers. So, I think we are familiar with this. Uh, kasi po, ang nangyari dito, pag harvest season na, kumukuha sila ng mga uh, Day way, ano po, mga daily laborers, alright? Yung mga araw-araw sinesuelduhan, suelduhan kada araw. Ang problema, natapos na yung harvest, okay, hindi pa sila sinesuelduhan. Alright? Hindi pa sila sinesuelduhan. The rich landowners have failed to pay the workers. Now, of course, we understand the very dependent 
alam niyo po yon yung mga arawan ng mga laborers, dependent sila dun sa sisweldohin nila na yon kasi pangkain yun eh. Pangkain yun eh. So pag hindi sila sinwelduhan ng kanilang amo, walang pangkain doon po doon sa kanilang mga tahanan, mga pamilya. And of course, imagine yung anguish na pinagdadaanan ng pong mga laborers po na ito. Ka last Sunday, ay winelcome natin yung ating mga kapatiran mula po sa Fukui. Mga OFWs po sila. Alam nyo, kinikwento po ng kanilang pastor, si Brother Joe, sila rin kinikwento nila. Yung pait ng exploitation ng atin pong mga kababayang OFWs. Alright? I'm sure, meron sa ibang mga lugar, pero at least doon sa kanilang na-experience sa Japan. Alam nyo po, yung isa doon na tumayo rito sa harapan, ah... Uh, Uh, ano po pala, sa Saudi siya, okay? Alam nyo kung ilang ilang buwan siyang hindi sinwelduhan ng kanyang employer? Isang taon. Okay. Wala po siyang nagawa. Tapos, yung iba po nating mga OFWs, maliit na yung kanilang sahod, okay? Kung hindi ka kasi magjajapayuki doon, ang choice mo, magwo-work ka sa factory. Ang liit ng sweldo. Alam nyo po, yung maliit na sweldo na yon, mababawasan pa yon kasi kakaltasan yon ng Filipino agency. Tapos yung kanilang katandem na Japanese agency, kakaltasan din. Kaya yung pong sweldo, inuuwing sweldo ng ating mga kababayan, halos wala nang matitira. Kakapurit na lamang. Kaya itong kwento na ito, hindi lang po ito nung panahon ni James. Hanggang ngayon, mga kapatid. Tama po ba? Alright. Siguro, nakaka-identify kayo rito kung hindi man po kayo. Alright. Siguro may mga kamag-anak kayong nag-OFW at alam nyo yung ganitong klaseng experience na ine-exploit yung atin pong mga kababayan. Alam nyo po, buti na lamang naging kristyano po yung pong ating pong mga brethren doon. Kasi po, kung hindi kayo magiging Christian, tapos ganito po ang lipunan po natin. Friends, how would you react? What would you do? You will... O ano, magkapakamatay ka na lang. ba? Diba? Anong gagawin mo? Diba? Ma ma Matidepress ka na lang. Magiging galit ka sa buhay. Diba? Or maybe you will resort to illegal means, no? Just to be able to augment your needs. But the beautiful thing is, because we have faith in the Lord, because we have God, we can be patient. We can be patient and we can trust the Lord who cares for us, who will avenge us in our day of need. So the poor and the oppressed disciples here in James derived comfort and encouragement from knowing that the Lord knew of their hardship. Okay? The Lord knew of their hardship. In verse 4, Sabi dito, the cries of the harvesters have reached the ears of the Lord Almighty. Mga kapatid, walang may tatago sa Panginoon. Maaring yung mga mayayaman, hindi nila pinakikinggan yung iyak ng mga mahihirap. Alright? Sila ay nagtetengang kawale. Alright? Sila po ay ini-ignore nila yung needs. Pero ang sabi po rito, The cries of the harvesters have reached the ears of the Lord Almighty. Brethren, our cry for justice, all right? Don't be disheartened because the Bible says they reach the ears of the Almighty. Amen? They reach the ears of the Almighty. Is there something right now in your life wherein your patience, your humility is being tested because... You're probably experiencing some unfair treatment or something like that. Brethren, cry to the Lord because the Bible says He hears. Other may, others may not know about it. Others may not know what you're going through. Yung mga kababayan natin na nasa abroad po, sa totoo lang, hindi alam ng mga kamag-anak nila what they're going through. Paano kung hindi ka na magiging Christian? Buti na lang pag Christian ka, alam mo na may Panginoon ka. Yung sinabi po dito, Lord Almighty, explain ko lang po. 
that Lord Almighty, in other translations, is the Lord of Sabaoth. Okay? Ano yung Lord of Sabaoth? It means the Lord of the armies in heaven and earth. Uy, nakakatakot siyon. Di ba? Siya ang hari, siya ang general, ang captain ng lahat ng mga hukbo. Okay? Of all the armies of the heavens and the earth. Okay? I read from news recently na yung isang destroyer ng French fleet nandito daw sa, dumaong daw sa, ano natin, sa pier natin. Di ba? So, Uy, destroyer. Uy, French, ano, French uh, destroyer. Pero wala yun eh, di ba? Kasi, hindi yun ang tanong eh. Ang tanong, is the Lord of Sabaoth on your side? Because He is the Lord of all the armies of the heavens and the earth. Brethren, we have nothing to fear if God is on our side, even if we are victims of injustice. Because we know that God will bring justice swiftly. So what is the commandment here? The command is to be patient. Alright? Sabi sa verse 7, Be patient then, brothers and sisters, until the Lord's coming. Alright? Be patient then, brothers and sisters. Alam nyo, yung being patient po dito, it is an imperative. Ang ibig sabihin, wag ka nang mag Huwag ka nang mag dun sa depression mo. Be patient. Okay? Sumunod ka na. Gawin mo na yan. Ngayon din. Be patient. Yan po yung emphasis po dito. The word patience is makrothimeo in Greek. Alright? And it means long-suffering. It is refusing to retaliate with carnal anger. It is enduring someone whose conduct is irritable or whose conduct is oppressive. May tawag tayo dyan. Ito yung mga anointed tribulators ng buhay natin. He controls his anger and does not seek revenge. Whoa! Alright? Brethren, it's just by the grace of God na hindi ka mag-retaliate. Di ba? Na hindi ka gaganti. Alright? Tama po? It's just by the grace of God na ikaw ay hindi maghihiganti. James knows that the readers are unable to defend themselves against their oppressors. Wala silang magawa eh. Alright? Wala silang magawa. Therefore, he urges them to exercise patience and leave matters in the hands of God. Okay? Who is coming to deliver them? Kaya po, pag wala kang Lord sa buhay mo, kanino ka tatakbo? Pero mga kapatid, dahil may Lord na po tayo, sa ating po mga buhay, alam po natin na hindi po tayo iiwanan at hindi po tayo nag-iisa sa atin pong mga paghihirap. Kaya ang sabi po dito, let us leave matters into the hands of God because He will deliver us. In 7, it says, Be patient then, brothers and sisters, until, until the Lord's coming. Okay? Until the Lord's coming. The readers, alright, of this epistle know that the Lord is coming back as a judge. So therefore, they ought to exercise. You know, ibig sabihin kaya, be patient, the Lord is coming because the Lord is coming as a judge. They ought to exercise self-control towards their enemies and demonstrate patience because God will avenge His people when He returns. Amen? Wag kang mawala ng tiwala sa Diyos kasi darating ang oras pag hihiganti ka ng Panginoon. Okay? Amen po ba doon? Alright? Paghihiganti ka ng Panginoon. 2 Thessalonians chapter 1, God is just. Amen? One of the attributes of God is that He is just. He is perfect. He is perfect in His justice. He will pay back trouble to those who trouble you. Grabe po, no? He will pay back trouble to those who trouble you. Relax ka lang. Si Lord bang bahala sa'yo. Okay? Na-experience na po ba to? I have experienced this, brethren. I have experienced this. How God has, has fought in my behalf. He will pay back trouble to those who trouble you. Give relief to you who are troubled and to us as well. 
This will happen when the Lord Jesus is revealed from heaven in blazing fire with his powerful angels. Ito yung ultimate, of course. He will punish those who do not know God and do not obey the gospel of our Lord Jesus. They will be punished with everlasting destruction and shut out from the presence of the Lord and from the glory of his might. On the day he comes to be glorified in his holy people and to be marveled at among all those who have believed. Brethren, let's encourage ourselves with these promises of God. Amen? Maybe in this world, mukha tayong pulube. Mukha tayong nakakaawa. Mukha, mukhang tayo yung ano po, talo sa mata ng mundong ito. Pero mga kapatid, the Lord is coming. Amen? Can we say that all together? The Lord is coming. Okay? The Lord is coming. This is not forever. The Lord is coming. He is the God who is just. So here we will find, sa susunod po ng mga verses, nagbigay po si James, si Apostle James, ng tatlong examples ng patience. Yung una, ang patience ng mga magsasaka. Pangalawa, ang patience ng mga propeta. At ang pangatlo ay ang patience ng isang patriarch sa Bible. Ang pangalan niya ay si Job. Yung una ay ang patience ng mga magsasaka. Meron po ba sa inyo rito farmer? O oh, naging farmer ka before? Alright. <laughs> okay. Meron po ba? Okay. Okay. Alright. Meron. So, maari hindi ka na farmer ngayon, pero nakaranas ka. ba? Nakaranas kang magsaka. Nakaranas kang magtanim. Alright. So, syempre, nandito po tayo sa Baguio. Kung di man tayo, yung mga kamag-anak natin, mga farmers po sila. Kasi some of our members, ganun po. Sabi dito, see how the farmer waits for the land to yield its valuable crop. Alright? So, gusto mo ba ng explanation? Gusto mo ba ng encouragement? Tumingin ka sa magsasaka. See how the farmer waits for the land to yield its valuable crop, patiently waiting for the autumn and spring rains. Merong nagsabi, If you are impatient, you must not become a farmer. Okay? Bakit po? Kasi walang tanim na bubunga ng overnight. Minsan yun po ang problema natin, di ba? Gumawa ka ng kabutihan ngayon pa lang, tapos sine-expect mo bukas, aani ka na. Alright? Minsan ganun po. Pero hindi po dapat. Wala pong tanim na aani ka na agad-agad inabukasan. In this verse, James cites the example of the farmer who waits. Alam nyo kung gano'ng katagal mag-wait ang farmer? Halos isang taon, di po ba? For the land to yield its valuable crop. Wala naman siyang magagawa eh. Kasi nakadepende po siya sa ulan. Nakadepende siya sa araw. Siyempre kay Lord. Kasi kahit umulan, kahit umaraw, eh kung sobra-sobra yung ulan, kung sobra-sobra yung araw. So lahat yun, nakadepende siya dun sa kabutihan ng Panginoon. All right? And hindi ka naman po pwedeng, di ba, magsisigaw. Oh, you can't do anything. All you can do is to wait patiently. The farmer anticipates a bountiful harvest, but he must patiently wait for the rains. May dalawang uri ng rains po dito, the autumn and the spring. Yung autumn rain pala sa Israel, bumabagsak yan during October season. Saglit lang yun. Enough na yun para nang sa ganun, mag-germinate yung mga buto. So, magtatanim yung farmer. Tapos after nun, mag na naman yung farmer kung kailan yung susunod na tinatawag na spring rains. Yung spring rains, kailangan dumating yun. Kasi yun yung magpapamature sa grain at yun po yung magpapadami ng yield, magpapadami ng fruits, magpapadami ng yield. So, the farmer essentially has learned that everything grows according to the seasons of the year. Okay, can I say that again? The farmer has learned that everything grows according to the seasons of the year. Brothers and sisters, may tamang season o panahon ang lahat ng bagay. Amen? Alright? Kung ito ay panahon ng tag-ulan, huwag mong i-expect na aaraw. Kasi panahon siya ng tag-ulan eh. Kung ito ay panahon ng tagtuyot, wag mong expect na umulan kasi season ito ng tagtuyot. The farmer knows the seasons. What season 
are you into right now when God is telling you to respect the season, to be patient while waiting for the next season to happen? Kasi po yung season na yan, may purpose yan. It is causing us to grow deep in our faith in the Lord. It is causing us to mature, to improve in our character, to become more and more like Christ. I don't know if you have encountered Ecclesiastes chapter 3, but here it says, wala po ito sa ating slides, there is an appointed time for everything. There is a time for every event under heaven. A time to give birth and a time to die. A time to plant and a time to uproot what is planted. A time to kill and a time to heal. A time to tear down and a time to build up. A time to weep and a time to laugh. A time to mourn and a time to dance. A time to throw stones and a time to gather stones. A time to embrace and a time to shun embracing. A time to search and a time to give up as lost. Grabe po, no? A time to search and a time to give up. Merong time na kailangan mo na mag-give up? Siguro meron kang hinahanap. And you probably have to say, it, it, it's finished. I have to give, to give up. Alright? A time to keep and a time to throw away. A time to tear apart and a time to sew together. A time to be silent and a time to speak. A time to love and a time to hate. A time for war and a time for peace. Brethren, there's a time for everything. That is why we have to be patient. What is your season right now? Is your season right now a time of planting? Perhaps you're young. Perhaps your season right now is you're nearing senior years. And it's a different season already. Iba na yung challenges. Iba na yung inaabangan mo sa Panginoon. So you too, be patient and stand firm because the Lord's coming is near. Sabi po ni James dito, be patient and stand firm. Sa ibang translations, ang nakalagay po dyan, be patient and strengthen your hearts. Be patient and strengthen your hearts. Because we often lose heart in difficult circumstances. But we must stand firm by faith in the knowledge that the Lord in due time will fulfill His promise that He will return and He will set up His kingdom forever. Ano yung pangalawa? Yung una, prophet, at yung una mga farmers. All right? The second example of patience are the prophets. Sino ba itong mga prophets na to? When you speak of the prophets, ito po yung mga propeta sa Old Testament at karamihan po sa kanila, naka-experience sila ng persecution kung hindi man sila ay pinatay. Isang kilalang kila ng prophet sa Bible ay nilagari sa kalahati po, ng, sa gitna ng kanyang katawan. That is the prophet Isaiah. Alright? That is why when you think of patience, encourage yourself with these words. The farmer knows how to wait. And the prophet also knows how to be patient. Brothers and sisters, an example of patience in the face of suffering, okay? In the face of suffering, take the prophets who spoke in the name of the Lord. So, being Jews, they knew what Apostle Paul was talking about. Ano yung mga examples itong mga Old Testament prophets na ito? For example, the persecution of the prophet Elijah under King Ahab and his wife Jezebel. All right. Ilang uh, ilang taon si siyang hinahunting para patayin itong si Ahab at ni Jezebel. Another example, the hardship Jeremiah suffered at the hands of the kings of Judah. Okay? Another example, the perseverance that Daniel displayed when he was put in the lion's den during the time of the exile kasi napolitiko siya. Okay? Napolitiko si Daniel. So kailangan niya maging patient. Brethren, what encouragement can we derive from these prophets? You see, the Old, Testament's prof the Old Testament prophets, they suffered because, according to James, they spoke in the name of the Lord. Okay? They spoke in the name of the Lord. Ano yung sabihin nun? Brethren, if we speak in the name of the Lord, if we live in the name of the Lord, we are not to expect that the world will be pleased. 
We are not to expect that the world will be our friends. When we speak in the name of the Lord, it is contrast to what the world believes. These Old Testament prophets were in the will of God. Yet they suffered. Yet they were persecuted. Alam niyo po yun, gumagawa ka ng tama, pero ikaw pa yung mali. Gumagawa ka ng tama, pero ikaw pa yung masama. Tama po. Meron po ba kayong ganong karanasan? All right. Gustong gusto ko itong sinabi ni Warren Wiersbe. Satan tells the faithful Christian that his suffering is the result of sin or unfaithfulness. Ganyan ni Satanas, di ba? Wala nang ginawa, kundi mag-akusa, mag-condemn. Pero sabi nga ni, ni, ni Wiersbe, based din sa text natin, and yet his suffering might well be because of faithfulness. Not necessarily because may ginawa kang kasalanan, pero kasi ikaw ay tapat kay Lord. We must never think that obedience automatically produces ease and pleasure. Amen po ba doon? We must never think that obedience automatically produces ease and pleasure. Sometimes yes. Alright? Kasi gumaganda yung umaayos yung buhay, tumatahimik yung buhay. Pero at the same time, because we are in this world, meron pong, meron pong discomfort. Our Lord was obedient and it led to the cross. Okay? Our Lord was obedient and it led to the cross. Second Timothy 3.12 In fact, everyone who wants to live a godly life in Christ Jesus will be persecuted. Correct? In fact, everyone, not some, not few, not only the pastors, missionaries, or those who are serving full-time in the Lord, it says everyone who wants to live a godly life in Christ Jesus will be persecuted. Nakakatulong po itong mga ganitong verse para hindi po tayo natataranta. Hindi po tayo nasasak kapag meron tayo pinagdadaanan po ng mga pagsubok. James chapter 5, verse 11. As you know, we count as blessed those who have persevered. Alright? Brethren, let's never forget that we are blessed when we persevere. Why are we blessed when we are persevering? Because God cares for us. He sees our sufferings for the sake of His name. And He is the one who will reward us. He is the one who will bless us. It doesn't matter if others are not pleased. It doesn't matter if others are not blessed by you. It, it doesn't matter kung, kung others are not pleased. The important thing is we please the Lord. And He is the one who will bless us. And the last is the patriarch Jacob. J Job. Alright? The patriarch Job. Patriarch siya kasi most likely he lived during the time of the patriarchs. You have heard of Job's perseverance and have seen what the Lord finally brought about. The Lord is full of compassion and mercy. Alright? Ilan po sa inyong nakakakilala kay Job? Okay. Oy, alright, okay. Di po ba, pag ngayon, pag narinig natin yung salitang Job, ang lahat, kaagad-agad maisip natin, yan yung lalaking na wala lahat sa kanya. Alright? Alam niyo po, recently, meron po tayong kapatiran dito na meron siyang kamag-anak na parang na Job. Sa limang anak, tatlo ang anak na namatay. Iba't ibang klase. Yung, iba, yung isa na baril, yung isa na sagasaan. At naririnig po namin ito, grabe, para siyang na Job. Diba? Mas, magagamit mo yun, para siyang na Job. Kasi ano ba nangyari kay Job? All right. Let's look at Job in Job chapter 1. Sige, medyo mag-skip mag, 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 tayo saglit bago natin tupuntahan. Job chapter 1. Okay, thank you. One day when Job's sons and daughters were feasting and drinking wine at the oldest brother's house, a messenger came to Job and said, The oxen were plowing and the donkeys were grazing nearby. And the Sabaeans attacked and made off with them. They put the servants to the sword, and I am the only one who has escaped to tell you. Alright? So, ninakaw yung mga oxen, yung pong mga hayop, alright? Mga donkeys ni Job. 
While he was still speaking, another messenger came and said, The fire of God fell from the heavens and burned up the sheep and the servants. Mga tupa naman po ito. And I'm the only one who has escaped to tell you. While he was still speaking, another messenger came and said, The Chaldeans formed three raiding parties and swept down on your camels and made off with them. They put the servants to the sword. Verse 18, While he was still speaking, another messenger came and said, Your sons and daughters were feasting and drinking wine at the oldest brother's house when suddenly a mighty wind swept in from the desert and struck the four corners of the house. It collapsed on them and they are dead and I'm the only one who has escaped to tell you. Grabe, yan yun, Job. Sunod, sunod, blow by blow by blow. Of course, may context ito. Ano po? Basahin po na lamang ninyo sa Job. Kasi po, na is approved ni Satanas na kaya si Job tapat dahil sa mga pagpapala. So, inalaw ng Diyos na subukin apo, si Job, tinanggal ang lahat ng kanyang mga ari-arian. Pero ito po ang result. Verse 20, At this, Job got up and tore his robe and shaved his head. Ibig sabihin po, naghumble siya. He fell to the ground in worship. Amen? He fell to the ground in worship and said, Naked I came from my mother's womb, and naked I will depart. The Lord gave, and the Lord has taken away. May the name of the Lord be praised. In all this, Job didn't sin by charging God with wrongdoing. Brethren, what did Job do? He worshipped. He worshipped the Lord. Amen? He worshipped the Lord. Let's look at the word endurance. Sige, balikan natin yung verse po kanina, yung slide. In verse 5, we saw the meaning of patience, refusing to be angry and take revenge. On the other hand, all right, perseverance means to remain steadfast even under great stress. Okay, even under great stress. So yung patience kanina, may umaalipusta sa'yo. Merong mga taong umaapi sa'yo. Pero ito naman, situation or circumstance. Si Job po, nagkasakit pa po yan. Inuud siya, nagkaroon siya ng mga, ano po, nagkaroon siya ng mga source dun sa kanyang mga ano, sa kanyang balat. Alright? Perseverance means, or endurance means to stay put and to stand fast when you feel like giving up and quitting. Alright? So, yung patience has something to do with people who irritate you, who oppress you. But endurance has something to do with situations that are really, really trying. Perseverance is a believer's active determination so that faith triumphs even during affliction. Brethren, that's the example of Job. Wala na sigurong example sa Bible bukod sa ating Panginoong Jesus na mas malala pa sa example po ni Job. But it says in verse 11, You have heard of Job's perseverance and have seen what the Lord finally brought about. What the Lord finally, alam ba, ano ba yung what did the Lord finally, what the Lord bring about, ano po? The Lord is full of compassion and mercy. We all know the story. When Job finished this test, when his test has been completed, the Lord blessed him back twice more. Alright? Binalik ni Lord yung kanyang, nagkaroon sila ulit ng mga anak. P pinaunlad pa ng Mas pa ng Diyos si Job. Kaya sabi rito, you have seen what the Lord finally brought about. God blessed Job because of his persevering faith. Even if he lost literally everything, including his health, and even his wife who wanted him to curse God. And yet, the Lord is full of compassion and mercy. Hindi naman natutuwa ang Panginoon mga kapatid kapag dumadaan tayo sa trial or test. Our, the heart of God goes out to us when, he go, when we are going through trials and suffering. Brethren, we can count on God, maaasahan natin ng Panginoon, on His compassion and concern for us. Hindi tayo nakakalimutan ng Panginoon sa atin pong mga suffering, sa atin pong mga testing. Tayo po ay masusustain sa atin pong paghihirap dahil sa abounding na pag-ibig at pagmamahal at awa ng Panginoon. Hindi tayo susubukan ng Diyos to the point na tayo po ay, ano po, bibigay. He will always provide a way out for our deliverance. And lastly, 
Si James po rito ay may mga additional na commands bukod sa pagiging patient. Ano bang ibig sabihin pag patient? When a person is patient, a person will not grumble and a person will not swear. Okay? Sabi rito sa verse 9, Don't grumble against one another, brothers and sisters, or you will be judged. The judge is standing at the door. All right? So, ano ba ang ginagawa natin? Paano mo malalaman kung ikaw, ikaw ay patient? You know that you are patient because you don't grumble. Sa Tagalog, you know that you are patient kasi hindi ka nagre-reklamo. You know that you are patient kasi hindi ka, ano po, nagsasalita ng mga bagay-bagay against others. When we are undergoing stress, sometimes or maybe oftentimes, the way we handle stress is we grumble. And grumbling means na pagdidiskitahan din po natin yung mga walang kinalamang mga mahal natin sa buhay. We find fault with others. We blame them for our troubles. All right? And sometimes we even blame the Lord. Brethren, groaning and grumbling are the opposite of being joyful, being patient. So when we grumble, we accuse God of the misfortunes that we experience. Yung last admonition ni James ay nasa verse 12. Interesting. Huwag ka daw mag-swear. Verse 12. Above all, my brothers and sisters, ano sabi? Do not swear, not by heaven or by earth or by anything else. All you need to say is a simple yes or no, otherwise you will be condemned. Napaisip ako dito. Bakit kaya meron silang swearing na issue dun sa church? I think this is, what, this is the reason why. Is It is possible, alright, that when we're angry, when we are under great stress, when we are fighting and quarreling, alright, we swear. To prove that we are innocent. To prove that we are truthful. Sa Tagalog, cross my heart. Hope to die. O, oh, ba? Yung iba, I swear on my mother's grave. O, oh, ba? Ginamit pa yung namatay na ina. Pero siguro sila dito, I swear on the city of Jerusalem. Ganon sila noon, ano? I swear, ano po, on heaven and on earth. And, and, James was saying, you don't need to do that. You don't need to swear just to prove that you are sincere. That you are innocent. Okay? Siguro pinagbint, kunyari lang, pinagbintangan sila ng mga employers nila na nangungupit kayo ha. Tapos sabi nila, I swear! I swear! <laughs> Alright? I'm just, you know, putting something, no? Siguro ito yung background na mga instances na napapaswear tayo. Matthew 5, 37, all you need to say is simply yes or no, and anything beyond this comes from the evil one. Alright? So, hindi mo na kinakailangang mag-swear. Kung totoo at dalisa yung yung puso, a simple yes or no, yun na yun. Your word is your bond. Let's end with this scripture. Hebrews chapter 11. Today's Communion Sunday. And let us run with endurance the race that is set before us. Amen? Let us run with endurance the race that is set before us. There is a race set before you and me. There is a race. Iba-iba tayo, mga kapatid. There is a race set specifically for each one of us. Run with endurance. Now, what are we going to do? How can we be patient? Verse 2 says, Fixing our eyes on Jesus. Amen? Fixing our eyes on Jesus, the author and perfecter of our faith. Alright? When we fix our eyes on the Lord, He will perfect our faith. He will strengthen our weary hearts. Who for the joy set before Him endured the cross. Amen? He endured the cross. So yung strength na kailangan natin, Panginoon, titingin po ako sa inyo. Titingin po ako sa inyo, Panginoon, you endure the cross and you will also help me, cause me to endure the cross right now, whatever that is. The humiliation probably, 
probably yun pong dahil Christian ka, ikaw ay persecuted. But Jesus endured the cross, despising the shame and has sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Brothers and sisters, Jesus is victorious over sin, death, and Satan. We can fix our eyes on Him because He will help us to endure and be victorious and be overcomers. I hope and pray that the word of the Lord today will bear fruit in our lives. Pwede po ba tayong tumayo, mga kapatid? Let's all stand. We will celebrate the ordinance of communion. But before that, let's just thank God for His word. Lord Jesus, Kayo lang po ang nakakaalam kung ano po ang aming pong mga pinagdadaanan. pinagdadaanan. Naiinip kami, Panginoon. Minsan po, nabubugnot kami, Panginoon. Minsan po, Panginoon, nagkakasala na po kami, Panginoon, dahil, Lord God, patawarin niyo po kami kapag Lord, hindi po tama ang aming pong response, Lord Jesus, sa aming pong mga sufferings. Ngunit, Panginoon, salamat at binigyan niyo kami ng encouragement ninyo ngayong umaga na to na darating kayo. Lord, you will right all wrongs. You will right all wrongs. Some of us, Father God, maybe the wrong that was done to us was something that was done so many years ago. So many years ago. Lord Jesus, perhaps there is someone here in this room who has been abused sexually. And it has been so long and no one knew about it. Lord Jesus, you are the Lord of Sabaoth who hears the cry of those who have been treated, Lord, unjustly. You are those, you are the one who hears the cries of your children. Lord Jesus, we pray for your grace to set free, Lord God, your children, for any wrong that has been done in the past that we still carry today, Lord, we pray that you will teach us to forgive. That you will teach us, Lord, to surrender all things and to expectantly wait for the Lord's coming. Salamat po. You are the judge, Lord. You are perfect in your justice. You will make all things right one day. And Lord, you will establish one day your eternal kingdom where we are going to be Lord God reigning with you hallelujah hallelujah we thank you Lord Jesus because you have put in our hearts the blessed Holy Spirit testifying that we are sons and daughters of God salamat po Panginoon we love you Lord Jesus and as we observe this ordinance of communion continue to work in our hearts that you have indeed given everything to purchase us. We love you, Lord. Amen.